What's up, everybody? How is everyone today? Hope you're doing well. Got a few little tidbits of information to talk about, and I just didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want you know stories to pile up, you know, and have the show go super long because I think it's better to try to keep the show short, just in case people come across it. But anyway. Welcome to Brad's Bad Show About Games. My name is Brad, and I am not playing basketball with LeBron James and Bugs Bunny this summer, though I might be watching. So, and I'll get into that a little later. Gonna do something a little different uh, today. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. But let's jump right into things with some news that was kind of surprising in one way, not surprising in another way. Um, G4 with a big announcement that Xavier Woods slash Austin Creed is going to be on the network. Now, if you'll rem uh, remember, there was a big push to get Creed on the network when they were reviving G4. He definitely wanted it. Um, I think almost everybody I saw on Twitter was like, of course, you got to get Creed. And so it's nice to see that that campaign from him paid off. The, well, it, what is, in my opinion, the downside to that is it is not a deal with Creed himself, so to speak. It is a deal with the WWE. And to me, that reeks of bad news because the way that works is that anything that happens through this show now is pretty much going to have to be okay through Vince McMahon and that terrifies me to think that Vince McMahon is going to be providing feedback on a show about video games in 2021 that's oh no that's terrible like I don't follow wrestling anymore I, I follow it just enough to know that Raw and Smackdown and even NXT which was once like the 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 indie show without being an indie show have fallen so hard. Like Braun Strowman now has like whenever he does something, there's a like if if he does like a a big charge around the ring, they now add in train sound effects when he's doing the move. So the show is becoming more cartoony by the day. And even this guy who was originally like, whose who's moniker is that he's the monster among men. No, I'm six eight and I weigh 340 pounds. I'll eat you alive. And now he's Thomas the Tank Engine. I kind of borrowed that comparison. I, I saw some other people making that comparison. I, I uh, just listened to a Wrestling Soup episode and they were, they made the same joke. Uh, but I... Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I just can't get into it anymore, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Creed, obviously, you know, a guy loves video games, I, I, I couldn't help one of the first thoughts I, you know, it popped in my head was, gee, I wonder what The Undertaker thinks about WWE officially partnering up with G4 after he buried, uh, uh, some of these guys for playing video games uh, a few uh, months back. Like I've tried to, I've, I just, I don't know, man. Like maybe he, maybe it wasn't a burial, but it, it just didn't sound good for a guy to sit back and like, oh, I prefer to be back in the locker room where everybody had a gun in their bag as opposed to a video game. They're all playing video games and stuff. Like, <laughs> like, where's the manly men? Like, eh, I hate manly men discussions. I hate it. It just. Nothing but I'm oh I'm tougher than you talk and it's just stupid. But anyway, hopefully the show whatever it, whatever becomes of it is good. Hopefully it doesn't just end up becoming something where the WWE just plugs whatever video game they've got going. Um, I have no idea how well like WWE Battlegrounds did. That was supposed to be like their new take because they had canceled development of WWE. Uh, 2k21 because the last game was just garbage 
and everybody talked about how terrible it is. And like the games, the WWE 2K series has just gone down in quality for years and years and years. And like, I still hate that they took out the story designer thing. It's one of my favorite things that they had in the game is I could make my own show, basically. Yeah, a lot of it was like pre-rendered animated cutscenes. You just like just select which character model you want to put in there. And but you but you could like select your own dialogue. You could have branching things where if somebody actually plays through the storyline after it's uploaded to their uh, ser uh through the service, um, if if say like you could set a condition like if you win this match, then this happens afterwards, and the story goes off in this direction. Like you could uh. Set up a you could set up a choice mid cutscene where it gives you like three options like uh do you like you you're given a chair by your manager on the outside do you use it and you know do you use it and cheat or do you reject it and try to win legitimately or something like that you know do you form an alliance and and so I like that kind of thing I like to be able to tell my own story so I miss those I miss that feature. When they took it out, and I just it, it I fell out of love with the with the games. I wanted to try Battlegrounds, but then I just kind of fell out of love with WWE in general, and just like nah, I'd rather not do that. If I'm gonna play a wrestling game now, it's, it's gonna be like uh, Rumble Roses uh, uh, XX or whatever it's called, the one that they've got um, in the Microsoft shop on Xbox One. It's like it's like 15 bucks for the base game. And then you could buy like a like DLC costumes for the girls and that from like uh like a dollar eight or something like that. But there's a bunch of them. I mean, he, even even Creed himself said something like once upon a time. I can't remember how long ago it was, but he said like, you know, uh, if, if you you take out the jiggle physics because it's a fan service game, uh, you know, this is actually a pretty good wrestling game. <laughs> but uh. I don't know. There is a real lack of like really good wrestling games. Like I don't know. Like I, I want a wrestling game that's not like based on a company that exists. Like I know AEW is supposed to be making a wrestling game, and I just don't care about it. I I can't. I can hardly bring myself to care about AEW anymore. Like I never really bought into the big hype. I was excited for them to launch. I was excited to see what they did, but it just reeked of, we're not WWE. We're our own thing. And now they're kind of just doing the same thing that like WCW had. Like their big guys, their big stars are like Big Show, Paul White, Sting, and Jericho. So I don't know. This this is sort of not entirely related to wrestling. I I mean to gaming, I guess. But um, that's gonna be a theme. Towards the end of the show, by the way, but uh, I don't know. I I I hope I hope Creed Show does well. I imagine you'll probably see other wrestlers there. I just hope that the fact that it is a official partnership with the WWE uh, doesn't hinder the quality of the show. That's all I'm hoping for. So. I guess we'll see whenever this launches. I think it's uh, later this year. I can't remember. Eh, it's not important. Uh, it, uh, well, I won't say it's not important, but we'll know when it launches. But anyway, hopefully we'll get some teases of it or something. But anyway, uh, moving right along to something that's fairly recent. By the way, I'm recording this on... Uh, the night of April 6th. I'm looking at my clock now. It says it's 10.30 p.m. Uh, 10.38 p.m. So this is a little bit late. Um, or getting to be late. But I, like I said, I didn't want stories to back up. Uh, E3 is on this year. Going to be all digital. And supposedly Nintendo will be there this year. I think a few developers won't be. But several are. And to be honest, like... I just hope that there's some fun announcements. Like, this is... That's all E3 really is to me. Like, and even if it was not an official E3 event. Like, like if I... What was it? They didn't do E3 last year, right? There was some... It was like... 
It was some like summer of games or something. It was supposed to be like a replacement, an unofficial replacement for E3. Well, this year it's back on. I imagine, uh, you know, I imagine we'll get some good announcements. And with Nintendo being there, like I, the first thing I saw people talking about right off the bat is news about Breath of the Wild 2. Um, we are confirmed to get at some point this year new information on Breath of the Wild 2. So that's exciting. Uh, and a well, but was it already officially revealed? You could say I'm talking about like an official, like real trailer. Like the first one was like a, I'd say as a teaser trailer. Like it's been revealed. They called it the prequel, but I don't know if like you could call it technically a an official reveal because there's no like title. But I guess you don't really need that. They showed game footage, maybe not gameplay, but they showed in-game footage of cutscenes uh, from whatever they had developed at the time. So, so I don't know. Um, I am curious what all Nintendo would have, though. Like, we already know, of course, like I said, this Breath of the Wild is supposed to be coming soon. There's a new Mario Golf game coming. There's, you know, the Pokemon games that are going to be out. Uh, Diamond and uh, the new... Uh, what was it? Shining. Uh, was it Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl or something? I can't. I think that's the name of the remakes. That's coming later this year, I believe, if I remember that right. Um, so there's some good stuff out there. Um, I imagine that they, which I don't know how. When was the last Smash announcement for Mithra and Pyra? Like, or Mithra and Pyra? I can't remember what those names. Uh, I can't remember. It feels like it's been forever since they announced them, but I know it wasn't that long ago. I still haven't recorded the classic mode and uh, spirit board for those characters yet. I've just... It, there's been a lot of, like, Fortnite stuff going on. I've been trying to keep up with that. And I've been busy doing other stuff, like, not gaming-related. But, um... I haven't had... I haven't really had time. Like, I played through... Like I was, I really wanted to do No Straight Roads, and that took up a, a little bit of time. And I did Dragon Ball Xenoverse too. So, like I said, I'm trying to get all that stuff up now. But I, uh, you know, I, I I'm sure it's it, E3. You got to do a Smash announcement. But I'm curious as to see if we'll get another Smash announcement before then. I can't remember what the dates were. Don't really feel like looking it up, but. At least we have that to look forward to. And hopefully there's some good things. Hopefully there will be plenty of announcements from other people too. So that's something to look forward to this summer. And this was just announced. As in, like, I think within the last hour since I decided to jump in. I was like, oh, I got enough topics to jump in and do a show. Keep it short. So... We're, uh, Nintendo Switch Online is getting Pac-Man 99, a Battle Royale game of Pac-Man. That, as, as far as we know, has no expiration date. So, you'll be able to do a Battle Royale-style Pac-Man game playing against 98 other players to, uh, in a Last Man Standing, uh, match. And... You know, first and foremost, that's cool. You know, I like these little Battle Royale games based on classic arcade games. You know, those are cool. As much as I like Fortnite and the general Battle Royale shooter game, I think games like this are fun too. And it gives people, like, like it's a new spin on classic legendary games. And I think that that is cool that they're actually doing that. However... They just destroyed Mario 35. That game is no longer available. And it just seems like so weird that they would destroy a Battle Royale game of a character that they own and then immediately bring in one that they don't own. So, I don't, I don't get it. Why did they take 
Mario 35 out. Like, if they wanted to... Like, the only... My hope is that seeing the constant jokes and just people's disappointment about how Mario 35 is no longer playable is that they're retooling it to be a general Mario Brothers Battle Royale game. Maybe they'll retitle it Mario Brothers 99 and make it to where it's the exact same thing that it was, only with 99 players instead of 35. I'm hoping that that will come out soon. If not soon, then I'm going to like put it on my bingo card, uh, my little fictional bingo card for E3, and hope that they announce it there. Uh, because I, you know, I want to play this. I'm gonna play this. Uh, but I do want the Mario game back, and I think a lot of people like that game, and it just sucks that. You know, they put a they they gave it a lifespan. Like I guess you know, not every game can last forever, but you could you can conserve games. Like this is it's an online feature. I, I don't know, man. Like, why create something good that you have the capacity to continue and then just choose not to? That's the thing that doesn't make sense to me. But I don't want to rail again about that game being gone so much. So let's let's enjoy this one. Uh, this looks like it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I'm definitely going to give it a try. It will be out tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, the 7th. So it's, it's practically here. So... I'm glad that, like, I, I want to see more of stuff like this. I don't know, like, how you could do that with some other games. But, like, I imagine you'll probably see Galaga 99 at some point. And some of these other kinds of games like that wouldn't surprise me. Galaga might actually be kind of fun. Like, you're shooting the, uh, the aliens. And each one you kill pops into another person's screen. And so, that that could be a that could be a really challenging game, actually. So, anyway, Pac Man ninety nine. I'm looking forward to playing it. Uh, looks real real fun. So next we're gonna do to go uh, we're going to go off topic, and something I'm going to just sort of casually can call a the, the side quest portion of the show, since this is a show about games, and that's what the show is called. We're going to go on a side quest, which in games, side quests are, you know, missions, side missions that aren't really relevant to the main story in any significant way. And so you, they're entirely optional. You don't have to do them. And they, you know, they're just, you know, they're not relevant to the main theme in most cases. Or they're mostly insignificant. Well, I'm going to go with the the first description there and then it's just going you know it's it's off topic and so what we're going to do is going to talk a little bit about the trailer that dropped for looney tunes now let me see what was the what's the what's the full name a new legacy yeah it's, it's looney tunes a new legacy i knew it was something like that but um this is very interesting in that let me say first and foremost, when they announced they were doing another Space Jam, I kind of rolled my eyes and was kind of like, really? We're bringing back Space Jam? Why? And I say that as somebody who, like, doesn't hate Space Jam. Like, I don't hate the first Space Jam. Is it super corny and silly and goofy and com? And just a sheer cash grab, of course it is. But do I hate it? No, I don't hate it. Like, I remember the hype for this. Like, I I remember it a little bit, but I do know like the the origin of Space Jam started when there was some like it was a promotion. It was a big promotional commercial campaign. Uh, where Michael Jordan showed up in a bunch of commercials and ads on TV selling stuff with the Looney Tunes. They were so popular that somebody in Hollywood said, let's, let's do a movie. Let's put Michael Jordan in a Looney Tunes movie. 
or let's bring the Looney Tunes into the real world or whatever and have them play basketball with Michael Jordan. Of course, it, it, it's stupid. The premise of it is stupid. It's still stupid here, to be quite honest, although I think they're trying to fix that. They're trying to make it make some kind of sense, and I'll get to that in a minute. But um, just the sheer ridiculousness of it, just look at this picture. It's LeBron James playing basketball with Bugs Bunny. It's dumb, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. So something can be dumb and still be funny or even, you know, good. Just because it's dumb doesn't mean it can't be good. But, um, anyway, so this whole thing is based on just, com is, is, it just came out of commercials. And, like, I, I was a big, I was big in the, the, Mostly, I think it was just because, like, I loved Michael Jordan when I was little. And I think it was just because, like, he, he was, like, so beloved. And he was the, uh, I think, legitimately, like, the, the, the most popular athlete, at least from what I could see back then, uh, on TV. I mean, and, like, I didn't care for basketball, really, as a kid, as a, as a sport. But, like, I remember getting excited to watch, like, when the Bulls would run out, you know, for the start of the game, and they'd have the music going, they would run the little computer animation of the Bulls running through the streets, and then they'd start introducing the players with the music, and the whole thing with the music, you know, it, it's sort of like wrestling, in a way, you know, to, to, it's sort of thematic, like, like these wrestler entrants, where they've got this epic music playing, and the crowd's cheering as they announce their name and everything, so it's a really cool experience. I always love that. And like just the other day I was watching clips of like uh, Michael Jordan, like dunks and stuff of like, like Michael Jordan's top 50 moments or something on YouTube. Because because like years later, like I played basketball in high school for uh, like three years. And, you know. I wasn't like super good or anything like that, but I had fun while I played for the most part. And I still still every now and then I'll still casually go outside and shoot ball all and, you know. But um so I, I kind of appreciate like what uh, Michael Jordan could do you know a little bit more because I I like I said I've played a little bit of the game. I do know how hard it is, you know how much, you know, I remember some of the practices of being in a hot gym, you know, running sprints, you know, running sprints until, or running suicides down, up and down a court, you know, lifting weights, <laughs> trying to play ball with a weighted basketball. That's fun. That was one of our practice things where, uh, Every now and again, the coach would pull out a ball that was like a good, a little bit heavier than your standard basketball, and he wanted us to play with it. So that was uh, that was interesting. But um, anyway, getting back to this uh, this trailer that dropped when they announced they were doing another one, I rolled my eyes. I was like, ugh, okay. I was like, probably not gonna see it. Maybe I'll see it at some point, but. Eh, it's it's another Space Jam movie. You know. It's probably going to be just as hokey as the first. So, you know. It, it is what it is. <clears throat> but anyway. I watched this trailer. And I'm not really expecting much. And by the end of the trailer, I was actually kind of excited to see the film. <laughs> Like, there's so much happening. And, um... And I, I've got so many different ideas for what they might be trying to do. Because I've, I've listened... I, I spent, like... When the when the trailer dropped, I spent most of the rest of the day when I wasn't busy doing something else watching people's reactions to it. And I heard some stuff people were saying. And I'll mention that here in a minute. But, uh... The trailer is... Really good. The animation looks great, actually, uh, and and one of the things that they do in it is 
So first off, the story, of course, seems to be that LeBron wants his son to become a basketball player because he's seen his potential. And and from what I understand is that there, uh, the his son in the film is not his actual son. It's an actor playing his son. Which that's fine. I I can understand like maybe it's like his kid didn't want to actually do it or something like that. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a movie after all. Anyway, so the kid's like, I don't want to do that, Dad. Like I this I just don't want to do it. That's not what I want to do. And so it seems like there's a bit of a, a butting of the heads there where LeBron wants him to to do this because he thinks he'll be good at it, but the son doesn't have the passion to do it. That's the perception because I'm because I'm sure there's going to be some extra stuff in there too. Um but something happens, the kid shows up in like this big elevator or something, he shows and he gets out with it looks like a bunch of computer servers and then LeBron's going after him, and the kid disappears. And then suddenly, LeBron looks like he's in front of this gigantic digital basketball or something. And then he's teleported into these worlds. And the first thing right off the bat people noticed is he's is LeBron is zooming past all of these different, looks like small planets. One of the first ones you see there is uh, it's like a ring around the planet that says Game of Thrones. So that stand that's that's very very interesting right off the bat because remember this is a movie that is starring Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. And while granted the Looney Tunes have always had their adult more risque side and you know that appeals to adults that always has and always will by the way these these characters it just will. Of course they're most people don't like wouldn't think twice about putting on a Looney Tunes sh- cartoon for their kid, even the old ones. So, but the Game of Thrones thing was interesting and caught people's attention right off the bat. So then suddenly, LeBron is talking to a digital head, the digital head and face <laughs> of uh, Don Cheadle, who says he is now in the serververse. So we are now establishing that this is more or less the, the, well, not more or less, it's literally the Warner Brothers Media Library. This is where all of the, the, the stuff they own is located. And I, I guess it's, it's in digital form. Now, some of that like confuses me a little bit, and I'm curious as to how that's going to play out regarding the continuity, because there seems to be continuity between this film and the second one, or uh, this film and the last one, and I'll get to that shortly too. But anyway, uh, so LeBron is in the serververse, and this guy, oh, what's his what's his character name? Anyway, uh, Don Cheadle's character tells him, like, you're only getting your son back if you play basketball with me. And then he tells this little cartoony-looking character who looks sort of like a weird computer mouse, but I don't think that's what it's supposed to be, um, to send LeBron to the rejects. And he pulls this lever that has a bunch of different world names show up, and if you freeze frame it and play it really uh, slow through there you'll see it has places like bedrock on there and thundera and i think atlantis i think showed up on there and before it lands on toon world spelled t-u-n-e so lebron drops through this trap door you see him go through land on this place it's real cartoony looking you hear that familiar little fanfare he hits the ground, he realizes he's a cartoon, and then you see Bugs Bunny with his trademark, yeah. what's up, Doc? Which, that was a terrible Bugs Bunny impression. Um, <laughs> so, LeBron is a cartoon now. 2D animation at this point in the trailer looks great. Uh, Bugs looks great, LeBron looks pretty good. Um, it's, it's always weird to me that they, you know, 
when they do the 2D characters in in I mean when they do like a real person in 2D it just never looks quite right no matter how good they do it like even like uh for like the new Scooby Doo episodes that they're doing on Boomerang or whatever right now like they've got all kinds of people and and just for some reason they just look off I I don't know what it is I guess it's just because, like, in a lot of, like, well, I guess it's more of a problem for Scooby-Doo because, like, it's, they're done in a way that the character design is supposed to be more uh, simplistic because it's harkening back to the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You series. So, like, Scooby and Shaggy and them all retain their original designs. But, um, I don't know, it's... Probably just me comparing how he looks in the real world versus his cartoon form. And so, naturally, that's going to be a little, you know, different. But otherwise, you know, it it looks great. The quality of the animation itself, you know, is very, very good. But anyway, getting back story-wise, we see LeBron is writing a list of of some key players he wants to recruit to play on his basketball team. And he's got Superman as the first one. Uh, I think the second one was Gandalf. And the third one was King Kong. The fourth one was the Iron Giant. And then there was a number there was a number five spot, but he didn't have anything written there in the trailer. Now that's already interesting. But Bugs is kind of looking at him like like LeBron's all excited. He's like, this is my dream team, man. This is who I want on my team. But Bugs is kind of like not impressed. He's like, no, I I know what you want. And then you see him there with all the Looney Tunes from the uh, first film, except for Pepe Le Pew. I won't, I won't talk about the Pepe Le Pew thing. That was kind of stupid. But anyway, he's like, I got your dream team right here. And Daffy passes the ball to, to Yosemite Sam. And he says, Sam, shoot the ball. And Sam pulls out his old trusty revolvers and just shoots the ball literally with his guns and ends up shooting Daffy in the face a few times. And we get the classic uh, Daffy beak to the back of the head with bullet holes. And he's like, let's try that again. You know. So. And if you rem- if for those of you who were keeping up with it, when they started doing the brand new Looney Tunes shorts that they were uh, supposedly were going to harken back to the classics. They put out a statement saying that, you know, they weren't going to give Sam or Elmer Fudd guns anymore because they just thought that all the good gun jokes had been told and they didn't see a reason to do it. Even though I think the main issue I had with that was that they wanted to put Elmer in his hunter's outfit and then not give him a gun. Like, like someone else, somebody I follow on Twitter pointed out, like, you know, Elmer was never always a hunter. There was some, there were shorts where he was like a businessman, um, a scientist in one. Uh, there's a pretty funny one where Elmer goes insane and he thinks he's a rabbit and he and Bugs trade places where Bugs thinks he's Elmer Fudd and Elmer thinks that he's a rabbit. And... That one's kind of funny that they did the role reversal and everything. Uh, but like I said, you know, there are plenty of, of the ones. Like, there, like there's one where Elmer's just a dude celebrating the 4th of July and he gets in a battle with some uh, ants. over like So, like, there wasn't, if you didn't want to give Elmer a gun, I think you could have done without putting him in his hunter outfit. You know, there's an easy way around that one. Now, I think for, like, Yosemite Sam, it's a little harder. Because... Then again, like, Sam was a pirate. And, you know, if you... Sam was a pirate in some... Sam was a politician in a few episodes. And Sam was just, like, this greedy dude who showed up, you know, in a few episodes, too. So, like, you could have written him without guns, and that would have been fine. So, anyway, that's that's, uh, that's getting off on something else that I had an issue with. But anyway, the gun jokes are back, and this was kind of proof that you could still do funny gun jokes for with the Looney Tunes. Anyway, um... Then you see it cut to this big basketball court. It's surrounded by people. 
2D cartoon LeBron is suddenly digitized back into his real life form. And Bugs Bunny, who is, of course, in his 2D form, is being um, digitized into a 3D form. And the, the transformation sequence for Bugs' arm, like, you only really get to see, like, it's mostly uh, Bugs' arm being slowly turned into 3D. You see him, like, the, the 3D depicted fur and glove as he's still mostly 2D. It's a really cool looking effect. Something to note, though, is that when Bugs is transforming, he's wearing his original Toon Squad uniform from the first movie. So there's going to be some sort of continuity here. And I'm wondering how they will handle that with like the serververse thing, considering that it looked just like before. It was just real world Michael Jordan stumbled into cartoon land. So I'm curious to see how that will, you know, be canonically explained. But anyway, immediately after the bugs transformation thing, it cuts to a shot of the mystery machine. With Scooby-Doo with his head hanging out as they're speeding towards something. Then you see the Iron Giant's foot comes down. A dragon, who I assume has a name, uh, most likely from Game of Thrones, flies in. Then it cuts to Fred Flintstone in his car shouting, yabba dabba doo While in the background you can see, like right in, or in the foreground, it's right in the screen. You see like Captain Caveman fly by. You see Yogi and Boo Boo running towards the screen, uh, trying to keep up with Fred. And, uh, you know, Wilma, Betty and Barney are all in the car with him, picking up Bam Bam, who's trying to keep up. And he's, uh, they're about to pass him, but Fred picks him up and puts him in the car with him. Magilla Gorilla is way off to the left. In the background behind all of these, behind Fred and Magilla and behind Yogi Bear, you see Chitara from the Thundercats doing flips, trying to keep up with them. Then it cuts to a, a, a scene of King Kong coming down off a building and roaring into the uh, camera as it cuts to the, the basketball court where now you're seeing like LeBron is just LeBron and the, the Toon Squad, Bugs, Daffy, Lola. Uh, there was a whole controversy over Lola too, but I won't get into that because that was largely that was largely kind of dumb for what they for the excuse they did was kind of dumb. Like we we decided to tone down her uh the sexual aspect of her character to make her uh what was the word they used for it? What was the word they used? More strong or something in that effect, and people were like, "What can she be?" Sexy and smart. Like, that exists. That's a thing. It's not like you have to choose. You know? It's not like you can... Oh, you can only be sexy. You can't be smart and sexy. Or if you're smart, you gotta be ugly. Like, that, no. Like, that's dumb. But anyway, I thought that the, the big hoopla over, like, the character design itself... It's, it's almost exactly the same character. Like, there's almost no change in, like, anything about her at all. So... I think the excuse they gave for why they wanted to tone down things was kind of dumb, but I thought like the reaction, like, oh my, they ruined her design. I'm like, they, it's, it's 99% the exact same design. Like, I don't even like, I don't know. I thought that was overblown, but anyway, now all these characters, the Looney Tunes are now surrounded by this whole sea of Warner Brothers own uh, characters. And if you look through the crowd at different shots in the trailer, you can see like, uh, different versions of the Joker from the Batman films. Mr. Freeze, I think, is in one shot. There's two different cat women standing next to each other and, like, two different penguins standing next to each other. There's Pennywise in a shot. And, like, these aren't the original people who played these characters. They're just people disguised, like, disguised, uh, dressed up as those characters who will just be standing in the background. Uh, the Mask is in one of them. Remember that film? Um... But also amongst the crowd, in the crowd, you'll have various Warner Brother owned cartoon characters. Like I said, you know, you'll have the Flintstones there. The Jetsons are in a few shots. Um, as for the Thundercats representation, you could see Chitara and lion in certain shots. Um, the Herculoids are in certain shots. Remember Gleep and Gloop? The, uh, the weird, like, 
sort of shape shifting, like they're just living blobs, and the sound they make is <laughs> like one of them has like a really high pitch when they, <laughs> which is this is terrible imitations. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about Gleep and Gloop in 2021, the Herculoids. I love those old cartoons, man. Golly, and I'm looking at this. I'm talking about 40 minutes. I could talk about this crap all day long. Um. Like the Herculoids are in the background. Space Ghost is in a shot. They got Space Ghost in this thing. And I said, like, I was going through tweeting all kinds of stuff. I was like, man, if they could have Space Ghost be doing, like, color commentary or something. Or play-by-play commentary for the game. Like, you bring in... uh, Like, it may not make total sense because this is supposed to focus on the Looney Tunes. And all these other characters will just be in the background. Most of them are probably not going to get any lines at all. If they do, they'll have one throwaway line just where they, they, they say their catchphrase. You'll probably hear Yogi Bear with a, Hey, boo-boo! And oh, that was a close shot there from LeBron at the very end! Yay! You know, you'll probably get something like that. You'll get a yabba-dabba-doo, just like because that was in the trailer. Jabberjaw! We gotta have Jabberjaw do whatever. I can't. I don't feel like doing that high pitch of a voice. But um, no, 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 no respect. Like I, I gotta hear that. But I want so bad for Space Ghost to be on commentary. That would be so funny to play into, like, or at least some acknowledgement of Space Ghost coast to coast. I, I I need that to happen. Instead of him just sort of floating around cheering on the Toon Squad, you know, I want to see Space Ghost say something. Even if it's one line, as long as it's in like the like a, an acknowledgement of coast to coast of some sort. But anyway, uh they're playing the the, the this time the team they're playing is the Goon Squad, and I tried to look these guys up and see if they were based on any previous, like, uh, existing characters, and I think they're original for this, but I do, I think that the characters are inspired by actual NBA and WNBA players. Like, I can't remember, like, exactly what, like, the first film, the Monstars... Where, like, these five little alien bug-like critters led by, like, this mob boss type of guy. And they stole the skills of five different NBA players and used them against the Toon Squad and Michael Jordan. I don't really know. There's not really much. We don't really know anything about the the Goon Squad other than it looks like they're superhero themed. Which, of course, makes sense. We live in the era where superhero films... And supervillain films, you know, they rule the roost. They're they're the kings of entertainment at this point. And um, so it makes sense they want to jump in on that. So where where would you go where you have Bugs Bunny play against aliens? Now you're playing against superheroes or supervillains. So, again, I want to see more story on these characters. But, um. Anyway, they did a little gag, and then they're like, they, at the end of the trailer has, like, Granny show up. It's like, I'm going to go out school on his butt. And she does all kinds of crazy moves and scores. And it ends with, like, she gets, it does the, the points she gets, the shot she makes, gives her 30 points. Because it's a senior discount. It's like a senior's benefit or something. This is a funny joke. That's where this shot uh, comes in, where the, both Bugs and LeBron are kind of like, wow, she's really good. But, um. But uh, anyway, uh, the trailer had me hyped, man. I'm very excited to see this film. Uh, mostly because one of the videos I watched said that WB wants to make this a franchise. They want to make this a continuous thing. And I wonder if the reason, like part of the reason why... Well, first, first things first. The addition of all these other characters, these established characters that... M- there's going to be, no matter, if you're an adult and you go watch this movie, there's going to be a handful of characters that you spot right off the bat that you're like, I remember that character. Like, I remember Jabberjaw. I remember Space Ghost. I remember the Thundercats. Or maybe you're like, I remember that particular Batman film. That was my favorite Batman film. You know, or some of these others. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, one of the monkeys from the Wizard of Oz can be seen in the crowd. Like, yeah, I, I like the Wizard of Oz. So you might see Dorothy and the Tin Man and uh, Scarecrow and the Lion chilling in the crowd somewhere. Anybody can show up. It's like Smash. It's like Smash Brothers. Anybody can show up. And like I've said a million times, crossovers will always work. Especially when they're like filled with this. Uh, we actually are going to have a film now where Bugs Bunny... And Yogi Bear and Lion O and all these some of these other characters were gonna be interacting for the first time. Like years ago I remember reading that there was a a, a proposed crossover show or film plan where Yogi Bear and Bugs Bunny would meet, but it fell through and it never happened. So You know, we've seen Bugs meet Mickey Mouse. Like every one, what I think probably my favorite all time film in terms of just how fun it is to watch and how good everyone's acting in it is uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I, I, that's probably my top favorite film. Just because I could never get tired of watching that film or, or even watching stuff related to how they made that film. But, uh, so we've seen Bugs with uh, Mickey. And this, we probably won't get a direct, uh, you know, interaction between Yogi and Bugs. But the fact that they'll be in the same movie is exciting. And I can't help but wonder, like, could they be maybe thinking about some sort of, of spinoff idea of the Laugh Olympics? Which was a Hanna-Barbera thing for all of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons where they split, uh, like, some some core uh, Hanna-Barbera cartoons up into three teams. We had the Yogi Yahooies, and yes, I remember these names. The Yogi Yahooies, led by Yogi Bear, and it mostly consisted of all the anthropomorphic animals, like, you know, Huckleberry Hound, uh, Quick Draw McGraw, uh, I think, like, Hokey Wolf. You had all those guys there. Then you had the Scooby Doobies, led by uh, Scooby and Shaggy, and, like, Speed Buggy and other characters like that, like, uh, oh, what was his name? Babu or something like that. The genie, one who's, who's whole, who's, uh, uh, his, his magic word was yapple dapple. And he almost always screwed up whatever it was he was trying to do. Um, and then they had the really rottens, which were all, I think these were original characters made for this, where the, they were led by a, a character who looked like he was supposed to be Dick Dastardly, but wasn't Dick Dastardly. And he had a sidekick dog that I can't remember what his name was, but it was effective. I think his name was Mumsley, but it was supposed to be Muttley. You know, the, the dog who's always going <laughs> every time he was mad and when he whenever Dick Dastardly would you know get a taste of his own medicine Muttley would just laugh with this <laughs> you know that real that iconic laugh it's such a good laugh but uh I wonder if that's what they're maybe planning to do because you know Space Jam could you know not necessarily have to do with basketball they could maybe make it a big sporty uh, sport thing. I mean, they could keep it basketball. But what if they're thinking about doing like a more direct crossover? What if like Bugs is like, okay, well, we can't recruit, you know, we, we can't get Elmer. We can't get Foghorn. We can't get Daffy. Maybe we need to reach out to Yogi Bear or, you know, the Thundercats to play ball. You know, what if we do a, 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 a tune? What if we do a uh, Space Jam where it's... Who knows? I don't. I couldn't pick a basketball player. What if Charles Barkley decides he wants to do a uh, a, a or Shaq? Shaq's everywhere nowadays. We we're talking about WWE and wrestling uh, and NBA players. What if Shaq wants to do a? Uh, you know, Shaq was recently on an episode of AEW and I and had a, a full match. I think. Uh, what if Shaq wants to do a Space Jam and he wants to recruit the Thundercats to uh, play for him? You know, anything can happen like that. So, that's interesting. But I did want, there was one more thing, though, before 
get out of here because I thought this was going to be a short show and it's now I've been talking for 50 minutes. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, what was one thing is like, this is supposed to represent WWE as a whole from what I saw in this trailer and maybe they're just holding it for the film. There was no representation for any sort of modern or even recent media from Cartoon Network. Original media. Like, no Dexter's Lab, no Powerpuff Girls, no Johnny Bravo, no Ed, Ed and Eddie, no Adventure Time, no, uh, if you want to go more recent, no Steven Universe, like, that's... Like, Steven Universe was one of their biggest hits of the recent years. They still use those characters for PSAs for social media and on TV. I mean, I'm pretty sure a bunch of little kids would go in to see Bugs Bunny play basketball would probably appreciate seeing Steven and uh, Garnet and Pearl and Amethyst, you know, just in the background, even if none of them say anything. I mean, I... I even I would love to see that. I would love to see that kind of thing, or maybe some Adult Swim. Uh, and if it's like like I said, I would be satisfied with Adult Swim representation in this, if they have Space Ghost acknowledged coast to coast. That that would be enough for me because at least it acknowledges Adult Swim. I want, but I I'm really it really does seem odd to me that this is clearly going it's meant to appeal to kids. It's, it's it's not an, like the the cameos and all will clearly be for adults, but it's clearly meant to be mostly appealing to kids too, like because it is Bugs Bunny. So I hope they'll throw in some Cartoon Network representation there, even if it is you know, like harkening back to the old What a Cartoon and Cartoon Cartoon Fridays era, you know. But like I said, I would be satisfied with just like, well, just throw the Powerpuff Girls in there. You know, give us one shot of like, say, Lola makes a, makes a three-pointer that everyone thought she was going to miss. And then you like see the Powerpuff Girls in the background, like high-five each other or something. I don't know. Or just have them just chilling in the background. I don't know. Like have them be floating up in the sky with Space Ghost and Superman or something. You know, just so that they're all just like, yay, go team. You know, that's what I want to see. But anyway, that comes out in July, and I'm excited for it. I think by then, hopefully by then, I know, well, I will for sure. Um, hopefully the vaccine and COVID situation will have been significantly improved. I'm due to get my second dose of the vaccine in just over a week on my birthday actually so my birthday present is getting a vaccine shot <laughs> fun fun times but um i'm really excited to see this man like i never thought that i would be legitimately excited to see a second space jam film like and think that it could actually be very entertaining because visually, it looks super good, too. I think that's what surprises me more than anything. Like, the 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 whole... And see, one more thing I, I want to say about, like, all the crossover stuff. The fact that they're going to be playing a game surrounded by this audience. Like, there was an audience for the first game where they were playing in a basketball arena. And there were some, like, generic background Hanna-Barbera... Um, not Hanna-Barbera, but Looney Tunes characters cheering for them. Like, random dog and random uh, chicken hawk from a handful of different shorts but these are established characters and they're from different universes all piled in together uh to create this official multiverse within you know this series now and it gives the game a for lack of a better word big fight feel which is as I said, sort of i've i don't know if i've heard like it's like the, the main event like this is supposed to be a big deal and if you see, like, Bugs Bunny's playing basketball, and in the background you see, like, various superheroes and villains, you know, come together to watch this spectacle, then it's selling you 
visually that this is a very important game with high stakes and it mean like it's very you know it's a much bigger deal than the first game was that's the way it seems to me is what they're trying to tell you without saying it so i think this is going to be a really cool film to watch will it be good you'll have to define good because i don't think the first one was good but i do think it was entertaining and I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, I think this one actually could be fairly good. Will it be a, a will it uh, win awards for writing and plot? Probably not. But I do think that, as a lot of people said, that it seems like LeBron James is maybe more a little bit better with the acting than Michael Jordan was. So. I think we're this will be a treat. It'll be a fun thing to go see. Maybe don't set your expectations super high, but go in, turn your brain off, and just watch uh watch a fantasy basketball game featuring an actual real you know basketball legend, you know. So I hope I'm I'm ready for it. And if possible, I do want to go see it in theaters. If not, then, then maybe not. And then we'll. If not, then I'll watch it out of theaters, and that's fine too. But I think this will. This is one of those films that will benefit from having a, you know, from being in front of an audience. So hopefully, hopefully, everything regarding vaccines and all is in a better place by the by the time this movie's out. And people can safely go see it without having to worry about dealing with COVID. But anyway, I talked way longer than I thought I was going to talk. I talked way longer about something that wasn't related to video games. Although, if they are planning to, to do a franchise out of this, imagine you could see a Space Squad, uh, a Space Jam video game where you can pick Bugs Bunny against Superman and they all have their own unique abilities and stuff. I wouldn't put it past them. I'm sure somebody out there has had that idea and has thrown that idea around as a potential thing that could happen in the future. How it would work, who knows? But surely somebody has had that idea. But anyway, thanks for listening. I know the show went way longer than I wanted it to, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And hope you don't mind the new side quests part of the shows I'm going to save. Uh... For special occasions. I'm not going to do this all the time. Or I'm trying not to do this all the time. Because I do want the show about games. To stay about games for the most part. Although basketball is still a game. <laughs> it's not It's not Brad's bad show about video games. It's Brad's bad show about games. Anyway. Anyway thanks for. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Go check out all my other stuff. And we will see you next time. Later.